How's it going everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming. Welcome back to Let's Make a Game 2018 version where we work on Natural Explorers, a sim RPG using the RPG Maker MB Engine. Thank you for joining me for episode 7. So let's take a look at some of the suggestions that people have made. Several of these have already been here. I will just kind of scroll down. You can pause if you see. There's a lot. I can't list them all. It's too much to do. There are lots of good suggestions in here. Here are some new people chiming in. KRSN3 says hire NPCs to further automate the mines and fishing posts. Eric Sanders says add some in-town jobs and alternate ways to make income. Video Wizard would like some climate survival elements like it gets too cold, you have to have the right clothing to stay warm. Dan B says add a town perk system that deals with nobles for tax cuts. Says add a familiar or a companion. Other people have mentioned give a pet. Add random encounters but the twist is they're not enemy encounters. They are random NPC camps where you interact with people. I kind of like that idea. That's cool. Also Jerry FFF Basis on Twitter sent me me some coin art. So we've updated the coin art. Let me save this document. Let's look at the coin art that was sent by Jerry. This is the coin art that Jerry sent me. Thank you for the art. It's much better than mine. We're going to use it. Thank you for giving me the rights to use it. I appreciate that. I basically copied the first effect we made. I replaced my image with Jerry's image. So we get this effect. And it looks good. It looks perfect. It's actually all I needed to be. I've replaced that inside the common events for the town timer. When we get money, we are going to play that animation instead. Great job. Thank you so much for that, Jerry. In this episode, I want to tackle a specific problem with how to deal with people being AFK and just making the game play itself, which is not what I wanted to do. The game needs to be able, you can kind of walk away to go get a cup of water or go to the bathroom and come back and not just your whole map and game be destroyed. Automate so that it can go for a couple minutes, but also you don't want the player to like, say, leave it on all night and go to sleep, wake up, and the game's easy because they have all a ton of resources now. Somebody suggested we do like a hunger system, and this will be a great idea to to add to show how easy it is to actually add another timer GUI element type thing. It's gonna take some work and art. Everything needs custom art. We gotta make custom art. You gotta expect that. I'll fast forward through this part so you guys don't have to watch me do it. It's basically a huge part of the game, so we have to make custom art for it. So we're gonna jump into A Sprite, and I have to decide if we wanna go horizontal or vertical with this GUI element. We'll deal with the programming of it later because I already have an idea how it's gonna work. It'll just be a simple timer system. Gonna make a series of images here. We'll have the images cycle based on a variable. So all we really need is like a couple of variables, one to count and one to switch the image, the artwork that will go inside the pictures folder. So it should be pretty easy. We just need to decide the width and height of everything. I'm thinking vertical would look cool because I kind of want to keep the horizontal bottom of the map, the bottom real estate clear in case we want to do hotkeys to do stuff. Do a vertical like on the left hand side or the right hand side hunger meter. As time goes on, we have to keep doing things in the game to keep our character from starving to death because if you starve to death, that will be your game over. If you AFK for a certain amount of time, your character will die and you'll lose your progress. So that'll stop you from leaving it on all night. But that's the mechanics. That's the idea anyway. Of course, everything's subject to change. We gotta decide how big we want it to be. We know our resolution is 1280 by 720. New vertical, we're looking at our 720. How high do we want the hunger meter to be? Maybe half of the screen, maybe a quarter of the screen. Let's bring a calculator. So if we go 720 and we divide that by four, we're looking at 180. So let's go with a quarter of the screen. You know what? Let's just check 720 divided by three. 240. I like that. It's going to be a third of the screen. So I'm going to go with, for the height, I know it's going to be 240, but what about the width? I think if we do 10% of that for the width, it would look fine. We can do 32, but I also don't want it to be too big and, up, and taking up too much space. Well, I'm going to go with a width of 24 and a height of 240. And we do need a transparent. This is going to be our hunger meter. Gosh, now we have to draw stuff. So bad at drawing. Let's get a palette. Let's edit it by the palette. I need to divide this into sections of 10. And what I'm going to do do is look at the pixel number in the bottom left hand corner over here. As I move my pixel around, I can see where what number I'm on. So if I go to the very top of this, I can scroll down to 24 pixels and I know this is going to be like the divider. So I have to create an image inside of this box and then copy it for each time. So I'll have 10 images, 10 very small PNG files that will cycle through and we'll just basically do a percentage system. Let's see what we can do.
Does that look like meat? I don't know. <laughs> it looks very weird, but it's. I'm going to imagine that's a stick of meat. Okay, so what I'm going to do is copy this for the first frame. I'm using the bottom left numbers to give me a close representation of where to put it. So I can look right here and I see that this is 22 and we know that the first one's going to take 24. So I need to move this down, this entire thing down until it's on 25. If I put the cursor right here. I see this is on Y coordinate of 25. The first 24 pixels are this and then it repeats itself. And then if we go down here, this should be 48. This is the spacer. 49 is when it starts. Repeat the same process by pasting it. There, that's our full food bar. And we'll probably have it start from the bottom and fill up as the player gets fuller. So if the player gets more hungry, it'll start to disappear from the top and go down. So I'm gonna export this one as 100% health. I'll export the next one by erasing the top one and call that 90% or whatever. So let's go ahead and do that process. I'll hit file export. I'm going to select a name, meat bar. We're gonna call this one meat bar 10. <laughs> I'm also gonna save this as an ace break. Now I just simply erase the top one. All right, now that we have our art for our meat bar, our hunger system, we need to actually event it slash code it into the game. I need to also put the art where it needs to be. Since we're going to be using show picture for this, we're going to put the meat bar art inside IMG pictures. Okay, we'll create a new common event, meat bar, which is basically our hunger system. We're gonna set it to a parallel process and we're gonna require that a switch be on and the switch is going to be meat bar switch. Let's go to our initialization event and add that switch. Meat bar, turn that on. Cool. Okay, now at the beginning of the game, meat bar is gonna be running, but it's an empty event, so which will cause us to lock up. We need to have some way to turn it off at some point or have it do something. So what we're gonna do is probably leave it on, but have it do things. We need to decide how long we want our health bar to last because we know that the game is going to read parallel process 60 times in a second if we're running at 60 FPS. That gives us a variable manipulation count of 60 per second. So if we want each meat bar to last for one minute, Say that you can AFK for a total of 10 minutes with a full, then we need to multiply 60 times 60, which is 3600. So this might get messy. I envision rewriting this system a few times. Let's just get something going though and start it with some rudimentary timer system. We'll control variables, create a variable called meat bar timer. We're going to subtract. Let's go with subtraction. We're going to take away one every frame of the game. Starting with a certain set amount, we can set the value at the beginning of the game and then reduce that value. We know we have 60 60 frames a second. We want to have 10 minutes total, so a minute per hunger meter. 60 times 60 times 10. At full hunger, we're going to have a value of 36,000. Let's set that variable to 36,000 at the beginning. We'll go back to our initialization event. Control a variable under meat bar. So the meat bar timer is going to be set to a value of 36,000, which is 10 minutes on our timer. Every frame of the game, we take away one. That's 60 in a second. That's 3,600 per minute. What we need to do is check to see where our meat bar is at. Maybe we should just draw it from the beginning. I'm also curious, I'm not sure, but I'm going to find out how this is going to work. If we have a parallel process and a show picture, is it going to continue to, sh to overlap pictures on top of pictures on top of pictures? I don't know because it uses a number for the picture because we're not just saying create a new picture, add new. We're actually saying create a picture with the parameters of whatever stored in the JSON for picture one, picture two, picture three, up to a hundred. So I think if it's already drawing picture one and we tell it to draw picture one, wouldn't it ignore that code or would it cause a problem with resources being taken? I'm not sure. Let's find out. We're going to do a conditional branch and we're going to check variable meat bar. And we're going to say if variable meat bar is greater than... Okay. 
So I've decided to use nine as the divider. So every 9% of your food bar will adjust if it shows. That way it'll show 10 food bars for more than a split second. So this is how it'll work. When you have 91% of your variable food hunger bar filled, it'll show all 10 food. If you have above 91. If you have above 82%, it'll show nine and it goes down like that until we get to 10% of your food bar remaining and it'll only show one. So I'm just gonna use these numbers for now. So because of the particular way that we're going to be doing this, I need to use else handler so that it'll only draw depending on where it's at. And I need to draw to do this conditional branch in a particular way so that it, so it can only be one outcome at any one time. We'll check from the highest value to the lowest value. 36,000 is our starting point. That'll be 100%. We also need to clamp that value. So let's start off at the top. We'll make a condition that's actually, we can use this one. If this is greater than 36,000, so if we eat food that restores our health bar and we put it over 36,000, we want to stop it from going above that 100% mark. What we'll do is say, if it is over this amount, then we're going to control it and set it to that amount. That's our controller. Actually, it would be smart if I use comments to help everybody understand this. We're going to multiply 36,000 by 0 0.91. That's going to tell us 91% of, of the max value. If the meat bar timer is above that value, 32,760 with an else branch, show a picture of a full health bar. Now we need to decide where it's going to be placed. Since it's going to be kind of static, we'll just designate a location. When picking a location, visualize X and Y as 0, 0 in the top left and your full maximum resolution in the bottom right. So if I'm using 1280 by 720 and I want it to be on the left-hand side and maybe at the bottom corner, then I'll use an X of 0 or anywhere in between depending on how much padding I want to use. Let's give 24 padding and see how that works. And for Y, I kind of want to put it at the bottom. I'm going to subtract the size of the image, which is 240. So what I'm going to be doing is subtracting the size of the image from the resolution on the Y axis and I'm using 1280 by 720. I'm going to go 720 because that's our Y and I'm going to subtract the size of the full image which is 240. I'm going to draw 480 pixels down but I actually want to use a little bit of padding. I'm going to subtract an additional 24. So I'm going to draw it at 456. And since the timer is going to start at 36,000 and the switch is going to be turned on with our initialization event, we know that this is going to draw. We're going to have to use show picture and use 10 of these for this hunger system for now. We're going to erase picture one. And I think a good idea, a good way to do this is I'm going to use picture 10 for meat bar 10. And for every meat bar, I'm going to use the picture number and allocate the first 10 pictures for the hunger system. So I'm going to erase picture 10 in show picture nine, which will be meat bar nine at the same location. I'm basically gonna copy this event and paste it inside the else handler. Now I'm going to change the number that it's looking for. 36,000 times 0 0.73 or 73%, 26,208. And we're gonna edit the erase picture from erasing 10 to nine, and we're gonna edit the show picture from nine to eight. We repeat this process several times. I'll speed it up. Now we need to set up our lose condition. So if our meat bar timer, our health, our hunger system goes to zero, we need to end the game. Do a conditional branch inside here, checking that variable if the meat bar timer is less than zero. Game over, we'll show a text. We'll say, yeah, sorry, yeah. Rest in pepperonis. Okay. And we'll make it very special by saying dim in the middle of starved to death. And we can do an animation or a sound effect or whatever we want. Let's go ahead and do a show animation here. We'll make an animation for when we starve. We'll wait for completion. After that animation, we will issue a game over screen. Let's set up an animation very quick. Nothing fancy schmancy here. We'll find a pattern. Starving to death is usually not very animated. So I, I don't want anything over the top. Just a simple GG. Perfect. Put a sound effect in here. <laughs> yep, we're gonna put the frog sound effect. 
and that's our death animation. Starved to death. Jump over to our common event, put that animation in there. Oh, it's already there. Now to test it, I don't wanna wait 10 minutes. I'm gonna write down our numbers, but I'm also going to divide all of them by 10 to speed this up by a factor of 10 so that the entire system will starve to death in one minute instead of 10 minutes. Let's do that first. We'll save our, and I'm gonna modify all of these variables by a factor of 10, even the initialization one. We're just gonna cut off the last digit for debug purposes. One thing I forgot to do is test the placement. Hopefully I put the image in the right spot. Yeah, I like that image. That looks like it's in a good spot. Normally it would take a minute for our hunger bar to go down, but it should only take six seconds. It's going down. <laughs> oh, look at our hunger bar. It's going down. It's great. <laughs> Only five hunger left. So it's moving at 10 times speed. We're basically gonna make the hunger bar 10 times longer until you expire. All right, we're getting taxes here. We might as well go ahead and activate this. And our hunger bar is down to one meat stick left. What's gonna happen when we run out of food? What's gonna happen? Oh no, oh no, oh no. Gonna happen? Is it working? Did it break? You have starved to death, rip. Game over. <laughs> so we have a lose condition. That means it's an actual game. It's not a walking simulator. It actually has a lose condition. Your character can starve to death. So in the next episode, we're going to figure out ways to add to that variable. Obviously, we just make an item that adds to, calls a common event and adds to the variable. You know what? I can do that very quickly, actually. So let's make food so that we can figure out how to not starve. We're gonna make this a very basic food item. Here we go, we'll make it this slab of meat. I should have looked at these images to inspire my image because I was just going off of like a stick of meat in my head when I was drawing it. Eat to stay alive, regular item. This can be consumable since the player is actually going to eat it. The scope will be all allies since it's like a global food system. Cajun, always. And what it's going to do is call a common event. We'll call common event five. So let's jump over to common event five. And common event five doesn't have a trigger or a switch or anything because it's being called from a different process from using an item. It'll only happen once, not every frame. Consume Prilosec. No, food. And this is just going to control a variable and add whatever amount we want to the meat bar. So we'll add, let's say 720 would be current because we're gonna multiply everything by 10 when we're done debugging it. So that is two minutes of food if we multiply it by 10. Award some items, let's change our items and give the player some food to start with. We should actually add an animation or some kind of sound effect for when we eat the food. So let's have the player use an animation, wait for completion. And let's do the same thing. Let's do a quick temporary one. I like this one, we'll copy the arrow special, paste it down here. We'll get rid of all the sound effects that it's doing and the flashing, change the pattern, add a sound effect in here. Okay, that's our animation. This is going to be eat food. All right, let's test our hunger system now. Start with 10, goes down to nine, eight. So it's like six seconds. It's approximately six seconds for each one right now. It'll be 60 seconds when we finalize it. Let's eat some food. We want to actually set that from screen to the player. So we'll change the animation, but it seems to add to the food. Let's do that and check our we're currently at, I can see it, transparent, so it was six. We add that, and it added more food. And it's working. What I'm gonna do now is change the variables back up and multiply everything by 10, and we have a working hunger system that eliminates the AFK problem that we have. Excellent, let's do that.
I'm going to use this animation for something, but I'm going to make a new one for eating food. But I'll do that in the next episode. I'm already out of time. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. I really appreciate every one of you guys for believing your comments. I really appreciate all the engagement and activity I have on these videos. This series is doing very well and I hope to continue doing it. So leave your comments below if you have any suggestions. If you have anything that you would like to see in this project, put it in the comments below. That'd be much appreciated. If you would like to support what I do, please consider backing me on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Driftwood Gaming. That is Patreon.com slash Driftwood Gaming. If you don't have money to throw at me, but you still want to show your support, that's also very helpful. Head over to the link in the description to the Discord channel. We'd love to have you over there. Hang out, chat with us. You can follow me on Twitter. I am at Driftwood Gaming. Special thanks to Jerry FFF Bassist for sending me the coin art. If you have art you would like to contribute to this project, it's okay to send me art. It's very appreciated, but only if it is free for commercial use. Attribution is okay because I credit everybody who I take resources from, aka a Creative Commons copyright. Like this video if you liked it. If you've ever liked anything in your life, can we get 10 likes on this video? Please, guys, I need 10 likes. Just give me 10 likes. I need 10 likes. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. I've got a lot of people who watch my videos are not subscribed. Hit that subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Hope you enjoy this series. Thanks for watching. You guys are awesome. Stay awesome. We'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.